bluebells. Loin or hip wheel. This move can be demonstrated from various angles. Block, place your hand under the armpit and swivel into hip throw. Note the pulling and pushing action on the defender's arms prior to the takedown. Three ways of escape from head chancery. Variation number one. Note the foot positions, striking points, and the lock. This is a close-up view of the lock. Here is a technique from a different angle. Variation number two. Escape into a dropping version of a full shoulder. Note the pull on the elbow prior to the takedown. Escape into a dropping version of a full shoulder. Variation number three. This is a close-up viewed from a different angle. Countermeasures against garroting. Variation number one. Step over his right leg and hook his ankle into a figure four lock. Note the foot positions, striking points, and the lock. Variation number two. Step forward, back fist to ribs, wrap left arm around opponent's arm, and move into hip throw. Apply shoulder arm lock. Variation number three. Take wrist and turn. Step forward and apply pressure to shoulder and wrist. <laughs> Variation number four. Strike to the arm, pull down, push upwards and move into a back hock. Variations on holding down. These hold downs and locks can be applied following any throw or takedown, and it's up to the individual practitioner to decide which combination to select. It's important when applying these locks that extreme care is taken to prevent serious injury to your partner.
pictures. Techniques in this section should always be demonstrated slowly, with no fast or jerky movements. The practitioner should be aware at this stage of any counter move by the opponent and be prepared to move into a secondary locking position. Yes. Although these locks are being demonstrated in a form, individual students can develop their own sequence. breaking strangles and chokes on the ground. This section features escapes from strangles and chokes whilst on the ground, countering with hold down and locks. Fast response is the main element in combating any strangle. You and your partner must take great care to avoid applying undue pressure whilst applying the choke. The previous section and this one are integral parts of a comprehensive self-defense syllabus and should be practiced diligently as continuous training will enable you to become aware of any sudden counter resistance by an attacker. You'll then be in a position to deal with this effectively. Hold downs are often combined with strikes to vital body points. Dropping version of a body drop. Block, place hand under left armpit and strike to the ribs. Kneel, keeping a very rigid right leg, and throw. Scissors and naked choke hold.
outside block, stepping to one side, strike to the back and apply choke. Take down using scissor movements, applying pressure under lower rib cage. Pull down on right arm, pushing up on your left, while stepping in and lifting your opponent's leg with your own. Apply straight arm lock. Scooping throws. Front scoop. Upward block, strike to throat with forearm. Push backwards and scoop. This throw is considered to be one of the most dangerous throws in the syllabus and care should be taken during practice to prevent your partner's head hitting the floor. Rear scoop. From another angle. Trying to back of neck, scoop and throw. Indian death lock. Cross block, elbow strike, step to the side and kneel. Lean into the opponent, forcing him backwards. You'll see the finish demonstrated from a different angle. Strike to groin, place your palm on the floor inside his leg and apply lock. This is another variation. Raise attacker onto his shoulders after stepping over him. Sit on attacker's back and execute spine and leg lock. Roundhouse kick to solar plexus while walking. These kicks must be practiced from both sides. Sleeper hold from a head chancery. This lock is preceded by a strike to the head using the inside forearm. This is another variation. Outside forearm block and elbows to ribs. Outside block, step in, elbow strike to kidney and back fist. Note the defensive position of the left hand. Purple belt. Valley drop throw. as seen from various angles. This is a variation. It's a close-up view of the lock. After the throw, roll into the attacker, placing your right knee under his arm and past his head. This maneuver will enable the lock to be applied more effectively. Counter to straight arm lock. 
Variation number one. As seen from various angles. Important to push the elbow away from you whilst turning the wrist palm downwards. This will relieve the pressure on the elbow. You can see the push and turn in close detail. Variation number two. Repeat the previous manoeuvre, but this time step behind and push the opponent backwards. Counter to back arm and collar hold. Variation number one, as demonstrated from various angles. Step forward, strike to ribs, duck under opponent's arm into back hammerlock. Variation number two. Note the wrist and elbow position prior to the throw. Strike to ribs, step back and elbow to the face before applying lock. <laughs> Variation number three. Step forward, strike to ribs, duck under opponent's arm into back hammerlock and perform rolling ankle throw. Maintain the back hammerlock during the throw and move into a wrist lock and head scissors. Technique number four. This is a variation. This is a close-up viewed from a different angle. is a variation. This is a close-up view of the lock. Technique number five. Back fist to ribs, break opponent's grip and double lock both arms. Counter to bar choke. Variation number one. Kick to the knee, turn wrist and apply pressure to elbow and step forward. Variation number two. 
Move into back hock throw. Roundhouse kick to kidneys. These should be practiced from both sides and all kicks should be focused. Following the strike, the kicking leg is placed in a stabilizing position. Upward rising block. Upward rising blocks demonstrated at varying speeds. Upward inside forearm block. All blocks are more effective if the fist is kept clenched. Block, step to the side into back hammer lock. Now from a different angle. The lock is followed by a punch to the ear. Front kick followed by a side kick. These should be practiced from both sides and all kicks should be focused. Pull down and against the elbow joints and throw. Head, hip and knee throw. Strike with inner forearm to the side of the neck prior to the throw. Pivot and kneel, take the opponent to the ground and apply hold down with a double arm lock with pressure on the throat. Side thrust kick. These kicks should be practiced against the knee, solar plexus, and the chin. Please practice using both legs. Front snap kick. Always make contact with the ball of your foot, keeping toes well back and your knee raised as high as possible prior to the strike. These kicks should be practiced using both legs. Wedge block. Step back, keeping your head down to avoid a headbutt.
Bring your arms inside the attacker's arms and kick. Step in and pull his arm down and across your chest. Whilst pulling downwards, push upwards against his leg. Following the throw, reverse back kick. Step over opponent, lift him from the ground and kneel into neck lock. Brown belt. Winding throws. Lock. Strike with palm heel to chin, step to the side and kneel, turning inside, rolling the attack around your body. Inner wind. In this wind, your arm is brought underneath the opponent's arm. From this angle, you must note the elbow strike to ribs prior to the throw. Variation on leg sweep. This is a leg sweep. Front sweeps. Now an example of a rear sweep. Rolling ankle. Yes. Yes. This sacrifice throw is achieved by making full use of your attacker's forward momentum. Note the portion of the armpit and the locked ankle position. Mm. Corner throw. This is another variation using one leg. Note the position of the arms, as the pull down with the simultaneous leg action creates the momentum for the throw. This time the right hand is placed on the back of the neck. Rear throw. This is the last in the series of sacrifice throws. Approach from the rear. Hand behind the head and punch or upward push with palm to the stomach prior to roll. Closely at the turning of the defender's body during the throw. Cross ankle throw. This throw shows the defender stepping across the opponent and locking against the ankle. Note the coordination of legs and arms during the throw. Leg wheel. Outer wheel. Yes. The throw is performed by pulling backwards, pushing forwards and striking with your leg against the back of the opponent's legs. Action against three or more attackers.
variation on stomach throws. Using the right leg. The left leg. And reverse double footed throw. Side footed throw. a hook throw observe the concerted push to the chest and hooking of the leg during the throw note the inverted movements of the defenders attacking leg several ways of throwing opponents from behind techniques are attacking moves designed to use the elements of surprise when an aggressor may be threatening a friend or colleague. You can approach the area unseen and instigate an attack from behind. Shoulder dislocations. These single and double shoulder locks are employed following throws and takedowns. These techniques can also be used to hold yes. down and restrain an aggressor until yes. help arrives. Ah. Dropping version of a reverse body drop. <laughs> drop, step past the opponent, kneel keeping your legs straight. Following the throw, lock by inverting the wrist and pulling upwards on the elbow. Shoulder crash. Shoulder wheel position and drop the opponent off your back. Palm heel knockout blow to chin. The following examples are to demonstrate strikes to the chin using the heel of the hand. It's important to tense the stomach muscles and exhale on impact. Left upward block with knife hand to neck. Pull the opponent's attacking arm down as you strike. When held by both arms from behind. Variation number one. For an effective and powerful back kick, raise the knee as high as possible. Side kick to kneecap. Remember to turn the toes back and kick with the heel. And once again, practice from both sides. 
upward kick to kneecap. Once again, practice from both sides. This is a variation. Three different blocks using the same blocking arm. Practice from both sides to build up a fast reactional defense. Arm and shoulder throw with shoulder lock and wrist lock. Side block. Step in and take the wrist and upper arm, then exert the pressure by bearing down. Drop to the neck with kick to the solar plexus. Normally practiced against two attackers from left and right sides. Just kick from ground to lower body. In the event you may find yourself on the ground during an attack, the ability to kick the attacker effectively from this position can be a great advantage. Side thrust kick to back of the knee from ground. Place your hand on the floor, hooking your left foot in front of your opponent's right leg and thrust kick to the back of the knee. From a different angle. Side snap kick. Side thrust kick to kneecap, followed by roundhouse to ribs. One-handed throws. In the event that you may have sustained an injury to one arm in jiu-jitsu, it's still possible to throw an opponent effectively. Technique number one. Technique number two. Technique number three. <laughs> Technique number four. Technique number five. Yes. 
Technique number six. This is a close-up viewed from a different angle. <laughs> 